Hello! In today's video, I'm sharing the best skin tints, tinted moisturizers, BB creams, and CC creams for all skin types, including mature skin. I have three drugstore and three high-end options to share with you today at various coverage levels. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new, and let's go ahead and get started. This is what my bare skin looks like, just to give you a baseline of what we're starting with. I have some dark spots, some sunspots, and some redness I like to even out. And I'll be showing you clips of each foundation from past thorough reviews I've done on each, just to show you what they look like on me and the type of coverage I get from each. I'm 49 years old and I have oily combination skin that is pretty normal and can have some dryness and sometimes some flakiness along the perimeter of my face. So I look for foundations that don't exaggerate those dry flaky areas while at the same time don't increase any shine or oil breakthrough in the center of my face, which can be a big challenge in the extreme heat and humidity I live in here in New Orleans. I'm pretty hard on foundations. This is my fourth, I think, updated top foundations video. I'm going through each category for you. I'll have the others and my recent top primers video linked for you up in the corner as well as down in my description box along with everything I'm sharing and wearing today. And most products also link through the YouTube shopping icons, but sometimes they don't have everything. So if you don't see something, check my description box. Everything will be listed there. I'm going in coverage order from most to least for the most part for today's video because most, if not all of these have a range of coverage. There will be some overlap, but I'm starting with the one with the most coverage that is also a pretty polar rising product that has probably the longest name of any complexion product name I've ever seen. This is It Cosmetics, Your Skin But Better, CC Plus, Color Correcting, Full Coverage Cream, Plus Anti-Aging, Hydrating Serum, Plus Broad Spectrum, SPF Plus, UVA, UVB, Physical Sunscreen. I like that for a name. So the reason why I say this is polarizing is because people seem to either really love this and swear by it or they can't stand it. And the reason most people can't stand it is because they find it cakey and heavy. And in my opinion, the only way it can end up cakey and heavy is if you use too much. If you use the right amount, it is so beautiful and natural, which is why it made the cut for this video. This is what I have on my face today. A little bit goes a long way. You can take this from medium to full coverage, depending on how much you layer it or how you apply it. I think this is best applied in thin layers, just building it up only where necessary. I love how quickly and easily it applies no matter what method I use. A lot of buildable foundations that build up to full or nearly full coverage don't apply very easily with your fingers or they can go streaky with a brush. This is so easy to slap on with your fingers and rub it in like a lotion, apply with a brush or a damp sponge, whatever method you prefer. If you apply the appropriate amount, if you figure out what that is for yourself, it looks and feels lightweight. It, it looks natural. It's flattering and smoothing and has a nice natural skin finish. It sits for me somewhere in between demi matte and radiant. It's just a, a natural finish that's flattering. It has collagen, peptides, niacinamide, and some other skin loving ingredients. And of course, SPF 50, which should not be your only sun protection for the day. This is great. You want extra protection on top of what you already applied during your skincare routine, but this should not be your sole sun protection. You would have to gob this on your skin to get that full SPF 50 protection, which goes back to not applying too much or it will look and feel heavy and cakey. Now it doesn't have added fragrance to it, but there is a slightly lemony scent here. From some various citrus extracts and oils, it doesn't bother me and my sensitive skin has never been bothered by this at all. But if you have very sensitive skin, you may wanna get a sample first and try it just to see if the scent or anything in here bothers you. I mean, I would say that about any product. This flatters my skin. It feels comfortable all day. It doesn't settle into or exaggerate my fine lines and texture as the day goes on. I also don't get extremely oily or greasy in my shine prone areas. I don't have to blot much with it. Now, if you're extremely oily, you may want to throw a mattifying primer on underneath it, but I think this is great for all skin types. If you're wanting 
added sunscreen protection on top of what you already use, along with skin benefiting ingredients and extra coverage beyond what a lot of other similar products offer. There's a reason why this just continues to be a bestseller. This is a lot of people's holy grail product and it just keeps making my list year after year. I forgot to tell you my shades. So I typically wear light medium throughout the year and in the summertime, I wear shade medium. I have medium on today. Next up, we have CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream. Now, don't be thrown off by the word matte in the name here. I truly think this can work across all skin types. I know a lot of people with dry skin really love this too because of the versatile finish. I'm actually not even quite sure why this is named as a BB cream because it doesn't have the typical BB cream ingredients, but it's called a BB cream, so I'm putting it in this video. This gives light to almost medium full coverage and right after I apply it, it has an extremely flattering, natural, soft matte finish that's extremely pore smoothing. Now this type of finish is extremely flattering across all skin types, even dry skin, that soft matte finish that doesn't exaggerate any dryness or flakes, but gives an airbrushed appearance. You don't want your complexion products to be too radiant because they can really exaggerate texture, fine lines, and pores. So what happens as this starts to mesh with my skin as the day goes on, it settles into a different type of finish. And that finish depends on different factors. The humidity level where I live, which is usually pretty humid, let's be honest, or the skincare I've used in the morning, all those factors that can make a big difference in how a foundation looks and wears throughout the day. I have had days where this gives a soft radiant finish. Even though it says clean matte BB cream for oily skin right here on the bottle. Sometimes I have to blot with this a couple times a day. It's never a greasy shine, but it's definitely not matte. However, it's always smoothing. It never breaks down on me and it feels lightweight all day. This is a great BB cream that has been on my list for years now and it falls somewhere in between that and a minimal coverage foundation and I think it's great for any skin type. I'm sort of living in fear that Urban Decay Hydromaniac Tinted Glow Hydrator is going to be reformulated or discontinued. I mean, it's not that serious. It's not that deep, but this video is going to look a little bit different. I had two other products in it. One was Tarte Cloud CC Cream and the other NARS Tinted Moisturizer. I had notes written out and then went to source them for you and found out both are discontinued. Brands are changing things and discontinuing things left and right every day, it seems like, but this is still around. Thankfully, I love this the moment I tried it. It's been in my regular rotation ever since. And I think it's great for all skin types. This applies very quickly and easily no matter what method I use. And it's actually pretty radiant right after I apply it, but then it morphs into sort of a soft radiant finish. It's buildable from light to medium coverage and feels extremely lightweight yet hydrating at the same time and blurs the pores beautifully and gives a healthy glow without looking greasy or exaggerating my oil breakthrough during during the day. I rarely have to blot with this except on extremely hot, humid days when I'm actually out in it. And that's pretty rare for a radiant type of complexion product. It's always flattering on my shine prone areas. It never settles or exaggerates fine lines and texture. I mean, I could say the same about every product I'm sharing with you today. And it also performs well on any dry flaky areas I have. This got a lot of hype when it first came out, which of course died down eventually as newer, brighter, shinier complexion products came out. I mean, that always happens, but it's still a great product that's completely underrated. And I think it's fantastic for all skin types. I think this is one of the best drugstore complexion products of any type from full coverage all the way to the sheerest of sheer. And I recently shared this in a holy grail drugstore products video. I think it's fantastic across all skin types. This is wet and wild, bare focus, 
Tinted Hydrator Tinted Skin Veil. This gives really nice lightweight hydration, but without increasing my oil production during the day, which is something I really appreciate. I need more hydration the older I get. I mean, we all do, but sometimes that comes at a cost. Sometimes I find myself needing to continually blot during the day, and that doesn't happen with this. It gives sheer to light medium coverage, depending on how I apply it, how much I build it, and it has a very flattering, natural skin finish. It's not too matte. It's not too radiant. It just sits somewhere in between. It does a nice job of evening out your skin tone and smoothing your skin and looking like your skin. It's just a nice, easy, everyday skin tint that's perfect for any skin type at a fantastic price point. It's been a minute since I've shared L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm, but that doesn't mean I don't like it and use it regularly. This lives in my everyday vanity, and I reach for it when I just want my skin to look better, but still look like skin and get some nice skincare benefits at the same time. I remember the first time I tried this, I was so surprised because my skin had never responded very well or well at all to other complexion balms. They always felt felt very heavy and greasy. I had to blot with them a lot during the day. And this is the complete opposite. It's very lightweight and hydrating and gives my skin a natural finish that's somewhere in between radiant and matte. It just looks like an improved version of my skin. It's a light coverage skin tint with skincare benefits. So I can take this from sheer to light coverage to even my skin tone and slightly conceal imperfections actions just to improve the way my natural skin looks. And although my pores aren't blurred completely, because let's face it, we have pores, we're supposed to have pores, they do look improved. This stays looking and feeling really nice during the day. I don't get excess shine and oil breakthrough like I do with most products of this type. Now, if you have really oily skin, excessively oily skin. This might not be the product for you. This is probably best for combination to dry skin. And I think it's fabulous for those of you with mature skin. This was such a surprise hit for me that has remained in my life. Now I have both shade 10 and 20 and reserve 10 for winter and 20 for when I have a little bit more color in my face. I bought my first bottle of Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Tint when it first launched simply to review. I didn't think I was actually going to have a place for this because of the claims. It's just not a typical product that I would think would be for me. But here I am with my second bottle almost halfway finished. This is the sheerest product in this video and it is the most expensive. And if you haven't tried it, you might be wondering why brands keep trying to dupe this, why people who love this love this so much, and just what's the point of a super natural sheer light coverage product like this? How is this different from other very sheer products? So this to me is the equivalent equivalent of applying a blurring filter to your face, but in real life, it gives a truly natural bare skin, no makeup makeup effect that also evens out your skin tone somewhat and gives a natural glow and blurs pores and genuinely looks like your skin but better because it's so hydrated and plump. It gives very sheer coverage, but it doesn't do nothing. And it's pretty unique to anything on the market, which I think is pretty evident by now because of how many brands have come out and, and tried to dupe it. They may look similar in the bottle with the encapsulated beads, but they don't perform the same on the skin. I have yet to try, and I've tried them all, a product that performs exactly the same as this one. Those of you that have tried the real thing know what I'm talking about. This is 75% water and feels amazingly hydrating and lightweight at the same time. When you dispense it, you see this watery gel consistency and these encapsulated micro droplets. And once you start swirling your brush around, those droplets burst. And that's where the pigment comes in that blends into your skin invisibly. And it looks really wet when you first start blending it in. If you have really dry skin or if you like a really dewy look, you may not even want to set it. I personally do. This is not going to be for you if you want lots of coverage.
coverage. This is for you if you want your skin to look like a better version of itself and maybe you want to pinpoint spot conceal if you have areas that need it. This is not totally mattifying on me. I don't stay completely shine free, but because it's water-based, when I do get shiny, it's not greasy. It's more glowy and healthy. Now, if you're wondering about that Chanel fragrance that so many Chanel products have, it does have a very soft, faint, expensive Chanel fragrance when I apply it, but it dissipates. I don't notice it after it's applied. This was extremely innovative upon its release. It still is. I mean, brands are still trying to come out with similar products. It's flattering. It's refreshing. There's a reason why people who love this love it so much and why I selected it for this video. I think this is a near perfect, true, no makeup, makeup, skin tint. For those of you who like hydrated, plumped, healthy looking skin. Now there were four categories in one video. I really had to narrow these down. So if I ever said I liked another BB cream, CC cream, skin tint, or tinted moisturizer, but it wasn't in this video, it doesn't mean I don't still like those. I had to be really, really cutthroat for this video. There are some other really great ones out there. These are just the ones I picked for my top six, I believe I had in this video. Do you agree with my picks? Do you not? Do you have others that you love? Let me know in the comments down below and let me know what category you want to see next because I'm trying to put a top foundations video out for you every four to six weeks amidst the new reviews. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and found it helpful, it would help me out a lot if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.